Hello, welcome viewers. Today, welcome to Cincinnati Home Theater. Uh, this business is local here in Cincinnati. It is owned by none other than Mr. Christopher Terry. Today, uh, we are going to be doing our capstone class um, interview with Mr. Chris Terry. Uh, for the record, today's date is 8-7-2017. Uh, uh, we are here approximately around 2.45 in the afternoon. Again, we're interviewing Chris Terry. My name is uh, James Butler, and we are on scene here at Cincinnati Home Theaters. So, would you mind telling us the name of your business and how you came to that? Uh, Cincinnati Home Theaters, uh, my initial thought with that was uh, many years ago, going back 13 years, I thought people that want home theaters will be searching for home theaters in the location, so it's a pretty simple thought process. Awesome. So, rendering uh, the contact name with the search engine name, you thought would correlate the two together to better maximize potential foot traffic. Yeah, but you know, 13 years ago, I don't think search engines was, was as, as dominant, but uh, I think uh, what I was thinking is yellow book listings and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. They made it sense exactly what we do. However, going forward from then to today, what we do is completely different. And, um, the name may box us in a little bit, but we've, we've been running it this long. Fantastic. So, from a perspective of infrastructure on titles, how do you title yourself being a business owner? Some people like to call themselves just owner, principal owner, CEO. What, what do you call yourself here? Um, I, I actually don't put a title on my business card, um, but you know, when I'm talking to vendors, I'm the owner. Fantastic. So, from a location, can you give us the uh, full mailing address here on site and what made you choose this location? Uh, the mailing address is 11755 Mosteller Road. It's in Sharonville, Ohio, 45241. Um, throughout the years of our growth, we've uh, grown from a 600 square foot building to a 4,500 square foot. And we really needed more room. And this uh, this was the premium spot in Cincinnati at one time here in the Tri County area. And I got the opportunity to take a location over here on the Micro Center Mall. And, uh, it's got frontage on the interstate, frontage on the road, so I figured uh, with the sign right there on the interstate, maybe I'll be able to uh, ship some of the ad dollars. Oh, okay. So, uh, potential passerbys from local traffic potentially seeing the sign, it's like additional advertising without having to pay for it, other than you want to space. Billboard, billboard is about twenty-five to thirty-two hundred dollars a month, and I've got that on the side of the building. <laughs> So, uh, just for the record, in case you know anybody might see this video and want to be able to contact you, what would be the phone number to call you? 513 home or 791-4663. And do you have a website uh, for your business? We do. It's CincinnatiHomeTheaters.com. That is theaters ending with an E-R-S. <laughs> yes. Um, do you know what your next code is by chance? If you don't, it's okay. So I can mean, edit this and add it in for you. Uh, what year was uh, Sose Home Theaters founded? Uh, that that would go back to uh, 2000, 2004. 2004. So for 13 years, you've been almost, almost 14 with this company. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, from a, a legal form of ownership, uh, is there anybody else involved in suggestions? It's just me. That's awesome. So, as an entrepreneur, what would you tell anybody looking to start your own business? I, w I would say uh, be prepared for four or five years of slavery. <laughs> and, and a whole life of uh, overworked and underpaid. <laughs> Sometimes not paid. Yeah. But there's uh, good times too. You know, there are good times. <laughs> So, from uh, a county perspective, Cincinnati makes up about three different counties potentially. What county do you conduct uh, your business in? The majority of our business uh, at this point is in Butler County. There's a lot of new construction there, and it's uh, younger money. Younger money is a little looser. And then, um, how many employees do you, do you have here, either part time, full time? Currently, today we staff 13. 13 people. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, what are employee requirements? Of, of you for the various segments or sectors of your business? What, what do you look for in the employee? Well, I mean, presentability, um, friendliness, uh, responsible, somebody that's clean. You can usually tell by looking at somebody whether they have drug problems or alcohol problems. So, you know, I mean, 
some of the mannerisms of people, you can tell from their experience how many jobs they pop back and forth. So we're, we're mainly looking for stable people who, who come off and are presentable in front of our clients. So from a perspective of products and services offered, what, what products and services do you offer here at SSO? Oh, it's a, it's a wide variety. Um, in the uh, home side and commercial side, where we're going in uh, two-piece projection, of course, on theater. Um, and then we've shifted to where we are the largest home automation dealer currently in the tri-state. Um, network, network infrastructure, commercial grade routers, access points, and then all of the audio video stuff you can imagine, the receivers, the turntables, um, speaker bars, speakers, all of it. On the car side, there's a wide variety of stuff there that I miss half of it, but you know, obviously SQ audio, sound quality driven audio systems with uh, processing and custom install, real custom install, window tent, lighting, security alarms, more so. From a target market, I, I know you have your home side, you said, and then your uh, our audio side. What would you consider your target market in each one of those sectors? What kind of individual statistics, you know, income, things yeah. like that? Well, I think on the home side, who we're usually working with is uh, mid 30s and up, and you're going to have an income of 250 plus, you know, for the household, and that that can go way up. On the car side, um, we're tar targeting the uh, mid 20s to mid 30s, and um, you know, income there doesn't matter as much. So you think that you know, with your business model here, you have really captured a segment of the market where you have somebody who might be part-time college student working in, at a local grocery store, making minimum wage, working 10 hours a week, saves up, wants to buy that subwoofer or a new head unit for his car to somebody who's making half a million dollars a year who wants a phenomenal, you know, THF certified theater installed in their head. Yeah, that's right. One of the things that we faced is I wanted to go for retail for many, many years, but with uh, our typical home customer, you're talking about a higher income, very busy, busy um, person, so they would never come into a retail location. You, you, you're more of a consultant. So you quote the project and they can spend $70,000 and have no problem with that, but they're never going to walk into a retail store. So when we started on cars, there was my reason to open retail. And in here, I can have somebody come in and spend, you know, they, they can save up for three or four weeks and pay for a $150 cent job. And then the next person can come in and drop $25,000 in the car. So it gives us a great reason to have a retail location. Okay. So with, with that uh, wide of a market and the strategy that you put in place to try to capture as much of that, who do you think that your competition is in this sector from a home perspective and from a car audio perspective? Well, there's mostly on, on the home side because it is a, you know, a consultation type business. There's no other shops that are really open business hours that do custom install. So we pull from your, your small shops, two, two guy companies who do custom installation, and then we pull from the higher end retailers, your, your Magnolia that doesn't really do installation anymore like we do. Um, so we'll pull from both sides of that. But as of right now, I don't think we have a direct competitor in the home market um, to where we lose. Uh, on the car side, there's a lot of small car audio shops, but the majority of them our customers aren't comfortable in. So from a, a future perspective, so you know, you said you've been doing this for about 13 to 14 years. What, what future plans do you have for your business uh, or potential goals that you would like to see set and achieve within the next five years? Or what are what are your future plans? Um, well, we, 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 we carry very high-end products on car and the home side. I'd like to get into more trinkets, more retail trinkets. And we've brought in uh, the hovering Bluetooth speaker. I like to have a, a, a what I would like to call the Bluetooth speaker cave, where it's a cave full of Bluetooth speakers. I think that's a huge market now, but it's going to be bigger in the future. Network speakers, network audio systems. So I would like to be able to display a ton of that and have the largest display in town. You know, so that's one of the areas that I plan on growing. Um, obviously, I'd like to be able to do a little bit more build out and display some more options. Right now, we're really, as far as display, only display like a medium range. 
But eventually I'd like to be able to display some of the higher end theaters we do here in the store. So uh, speaking of uh, things, you know, and, and others, you know, we have a, a wall of various audio that typically you don't see too much in the traditional home anymore. Before, you used to always see these large yeah. tower speakers. I see you have them here on display. Mm -hmm. What uh, what makes you still stock things like this, and, and why, why would customers go for these items? I mean, this is absolutely yeah. intriguing. <laughs> I think, I think I display and stock this stuff because of my love for audio. Um, we still sell a good amount of towers, however, it's not a daily grab and go product. Okay. So this is going to be for somebody who's specifically looking for just two-channel audio and likes the quality of music? Uh, we have a lot of two-channel listeners, um, but no, we, we get a lot of people who want to be able to run home theaters and have that theme theater look to where they have large-scale speakers in the room. Now, do you think there's value in, in having the large scale versus like, I see some of these were kind of uh, yeah. in the wall, I think they're called in-wall speakers. Yeah, in-wall speakers are great. Mm -hmm. you, you can buy the best quality in-wall speakers you can imagine. The difference is, is this is a controlled environment. So the speakers are set in the cabinet, made exactly for that speaker, tuned exactly for that speaker. Mm -hmm. So here we know 100% it's going to be correct. Now if I'm in a situation, and a lot of my customers are in this situation, to where they want this audio, but the wife says, no, I'm not dusting it, and I'm not tripping over it in the middle of the floor. So then we'll do it in wall system. And we do sell back boxes that are built for those in-wall and selling speakers to where we can get a similar sound out of an in-wall speaker. Of course, you have other treatment issues with vibration through the walls and stuff like that that we got to tackle. So in the end, to get that kind of sound, you are going to spend more money to put it in the wall. But to be fair, nine out of ten customers are okay with good medium range sound to buy at price point. So in wall and cylinders are still our biggest category. Uh, so for the last question of this interview today, I have: uh, What was your most proud moment as a business owner? Absolutely. Uh, very good question. Um, had many of them through the years. But probably when uh, we had a customer who had saw a Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous episode, mm -hmm. and he wanted that exact deal, so it made me really proud to work with that kind of equipment. Mm -hmm. There was uh, a basic two-piece projection setup, and he was about $180,000 deep on one day of work. So, so $180,000 to $180 for a car radio. Yep. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's the clientele that Chris Terry here at Cincinnati Home Theaters is working with. Chris, we want to thank you for your time, for all those viewing. Uh, again, you know, we appreciate uh, you tuning in with us today. And again, thanks, Chris. I thank appreciate you your time today. Thank you.